we'll kind of I, don't know, I don't know if I do it's good. I'm going to carry this around so I look more official and everything. Uh, but I will, cool, I will get us started. So, as you probably already know by now, my name is Matt Scott, and I am here as your presenter for the talk on three steps to becoming a real world superhero. So, just to spoil it in advance, uh, this is not about how to fly, this is not about like powers of invisibility and things like this. Uh, it's about really making a meaningful impact with your with the work that you're doing and the skills that you're having. Um, Elliot was talking a lot about technical skills and databases, and I think all of you, as long as you decide it's what you want to do, will have those technical skills, and that's great, and you'll develop those over time. But what I'm here to talk about is really how you could use the skills that you're developing in a meaningful way, or, or in a way that you're uh, really making a difference in the world because, as I'm sure you know, uh, through social media, through news, through whatever, there are a lot of problems and challenges in the world that need my help and need your help, and so this is what that's about. So, just to kind of kick us off um, and tell you a little bit more about myself, in addition to being your presenter, I am also a quote unquote storyteller at work. Uh, and what that means in my case is that I'm focused on, well, in one sense, marketing and communications, um, helping get the word out about the projects I work with, which I'll tell you about in a second. Um, but it also means that I interview a lot of people to learn about their stories and further amplify and share those. Um, so the two big projects that I'm focused on, which you might have seen in my bio, uh, one, I'm the creator of something called 180 Degrees of Impact, which is a project to a project to celebrate um, and learn from 180 people changing our world for the better. Um, that means people who are in tech, people who are in non-technical fields, and really to dive in and understand why and how they do the work that they do, uh, which is a lot of what I'm going to be sharing as we go along. But the other big project that I'm focused on right now in my full-time work is NASA's International Space Apps Challenge, which is a global series of hackathons happening October 19th to 21st. Um, and over the course of that weekend, there will be tens of thousands of people in about 200 plus events creating solutions, I'm sure you all know as Hack BCA or Hack BCA adjacent people about hackathons. Um, creating solutions that are better for, for uh, the improvement of Earth and space. And so again, last year it was 25,000 people in 187 cities. Um, and I think the closest event happening to here is actually Space Apps NYC, which is one of the, the bigger Space Apps events worldwide. But as I get started, um, I know I'm going to be talking about three steps to becoming a real world superhero. And again, you're probably asking yourself, what does that even mean? And in my opinion, a real world superhero is someone who is focused on making the world a better place through their talents and skills. So they might be doing it for something like hunger or with poverty. Um, in your case, uh, I know it's going to be using tech for a lot of these solutions. And so I'll share a lot of examples of how people are doing that and lessons you could learn from them. Um, but just to start out with some examples of people that I've interviewed through my work, um, there's Megan Smith, who is the former U.S. Chief Technology Officer, and here's her um, with President Obama, and she was part of the Obama administration at the time, uh, which unleashed an unprecedented 200,000 data sets for hackers and, and people who are creating solutions to work with. And so Megan was really a champion of that, but a lot of her work has enabled people to create solutions, again, that are improving their local communities in the way that they decide that they'd like to improve their communities. Uh, there's Chris Libri, who is the Senior Director of Global, Global Giving and Impact at eBay. And a lot of the work that he's doing at eBay is focused on impact. But it's also focused on bringing together different organizations to support startups um, and even people like you who might decide, hey, I want to create something that's good for our world. And so one cool thing that he does is that he's bringing together eBay, Walmart, Ikea, all these massive organizations, again, to support startups that are making our world a better place because that support is so important to make a difference. 
And then finally, there's Katie Coleman, or I should say astronaut Katie Coleman, who had her view from space on the International Space Station and now is coming back and using her voice and her experience uh, running experiments on the International Space Station, the ISS, in order to inspire people to really embrace diversity, inclusion, collaboration, and things that astronauts need in space. And so those are just a few examples of the people I've been thankful to meet and interview through my different projects so far. Um, but really what I want to focus on is this key question. What's your power? And you'll notice you all have post-it notes right in front of you. Um, because I was really hoping through this section, or through this session, that with these different notes, you could start to think about some of these questions and take notes on some of the answers for yourself. Um, so I don't know if you have pens. I dropped a few pens around the room and for those who don't have them. Um, but I'd really love if now each of you could take about 30 seconds to think about this question, what's your power? And when I ask that question, I really want you to think about not like what your superpower would be if you wore a cape and, and all that, uh, but really I want you to think about like what is your the skill, the personality trait, uh, the technology, whatever it might be that you could offer to the world to make an impact. Yeah, there's a lot of thinking about that. So think about that, and as different notes or ideas come up, like just write anything down. And I would say to use this little green-ish post-it note as you do that. And again, it could be a skill, personality trait, maybe it's an idea that you've had, um, maybe it's a tool or technology. It might be something that you want to change in the world or something that makes you angry about the world. Again, what is your power? And definitely no judgment. You're not being graded on, on what you write down. Did anyone have an easy time coming up with something? Any of you by a show of hands? I saw some writing down. I'm curious for those of you who have written something or have stopped writing, what are some of the things that came to mind for you in terms of this question? What's your power? Did you have any ideas for oh you guys have a couple of ideas? So what's your what's your power? I put engineering. Engineering? Cool. Uh, I put passion for nature. Passion for nature. Cool. Yeah. Being able to laugh at like anything. Being able to laugh at anything is a really great power, especially in like the stressful moments. Cool. Are there any others that anyone wants to share? Cool. I think that, you know, this question is actually going to be the key question that I want you to consider. Um, I know that it's tough. I'm not sure what I would write down honestly if you ask me this question, but I'm hoping that through this, through this presentation and through some of the different prompts and questions that I asked throughout that you're thinking about, that you could kind of get a sense of what your power is and how you can make an impact. That is ultimately the goal of this presentation. Again, you'll have an understanding of the different technical skills you have. You might be an engineer, um, you might be someone with a non-technical background, but all of you have skills and you're developing skills. And I want you to start thinking about how you could use those to make a difference and do something meaningful for, for our world, at least as, as, far as, uh, as far as you determine what is meaningful. So just to start out uh, and give a little bit more context, I mentioned not all superheroes wear capes, it's corny, uh, but it's true. And I wanted to start out with this video clip from an interview I had with 
uh, astronaut Katie Coleman, who I mentioned a little bit earlier, where she's talking about the importance of using your skills to make an impact. So let's see. Well, I was living up on the International Space Station. I, I had a very special vantage point. And when I looked out at our beautiful Earth, I didn't actually see a planet. I saw a spaceship, a spaceship Earth. And that's where all of us live right now. We are all on a journey. And whether we have our feet on the Earth or we're flying through space, we've got problem solving to do. We need to understand how do we recycle our water? How do we make sure that we take care of our air? How do we grow food in places where it's really hard to do that? Those are problems for space exploration, and they're also problems for sustainable growth. My view of our whole planet helped me understand the urgency of coming together to find sustainable solutions to keep our Earth healthy. And it's going to take all of us working together to accomplish that. It's going to take innovative problem solving and working in diverse teams. And those things aren't easy, especially the team part. That means that you're working together with people who share the same passion, but probably and hopefully think a lot differently than you. Than you do. Uh, cool. So that's just a little bit of a preview. One of the things, um, and I'll be sharing a few different perspectives with you throughout this talk from different people who, again, are making an impact in their, their own way. Um, but again, I mentioned the key question to think about is what's your power? And if there's one thing that you walk away with from this talk, I want it to be just remembering these three points. Your origin story, your kryptonite, and your power. Again, your origin story, your kryptonite, and your power. Um, so again, I'd love if you could just repeat after me. I want everyone to remember. First and foremost, your origin story. Your origin story. Your kryptonite? Your kryptonite. Your power. Your power. You didn't say power like you meant it. You know, your your origin story? Your origin story. Your kryptonite. Your kryptonite. Your power. Your power. I like the idea. I like your, your spirit behind it. Again, your power. Your power. Your power. Your power. Okay. It's the morning, so I'll, I'll forgive that. But I think it's... The point is really, I, th I think, other than just remembering these three key points, that your origin story, your kryptonite, and your power, it's so important to also really believe in your ability to make an impact. And, um, you know, hopefully through some of the stories you s you'll see, which are from a lot of people, some who are making an impact, uh, others who are just working their way up to making a huge global impact, um, you'll see that anyone can make a difference in the world, whether small or big, whatever you want to accomplish. The first thing to start with is the origin story. And I give these two examples of people that I've interviewed um, because I think they're a good example of like the two types of origin stories that I've found in the conversations I've had with people. And I mentioned my project 180 Degrees of Impact, but through that project I've had more than 30 hours of conversations with people who are making a difference. Uh, through the NASA International Space Apps Challenge, I've had so many more conversations with people who are making a difference. And I found that there are really two types of approaches for why people choose to do the work that they're doing, whether that's impactful work or uh, something else. And one is like the way that Jade, who is over here, has approached her work, which is uh, Jade is a video game composer. She makes music and soundtracks for video games um, of all sorts. And her focus and her motivation is really to do it in an inclusive way. Uh, so her background uh, has really always been in music. She learned piano from a young age, and now she's actually using that skill. And again, that's something I've seen time and time again from you know, different change makers that sometimes it's something they've been building up to their whole life. Um, other times, in the case of Kristen, Kristen Honey over here, uh, who is uh, formerly with uh, the White House and someone who worked with Megan Smith, who I mentioned earlier, but now um, the innovator in residence at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Kristen's purpose and the way that she's spending her life was not something that she worked up to, it was something that was sprung on her. Kristen focuses on using her work in the innovation space 
to combat Lyme disease, which for those of you who don't know, is a tick-borne illness and um, really anyone could get Lyme disease, but what happens is that you become sick and it's you know a struggle to navigate Lyme disease, especially when you're just trying to live your life. Um, and Kristen was diagnosed with Lyme disease and she had her battle with that. She, she managed to overcome Lyme disease, uh, but now she uses her work and her life's work to focus on Lyme disease and finding innovations and technology that could solve that problem. Uh, so again, maybe you have an idea of what your origin story is now. Maybe there's something that you're incredibly passionate about, something that motivates you now and pushes you to uh, get up in the morning and want to do something in this world once you graduate. Uh, or maybe it's something that will come up at one point in life. Maybe it's someone you'll meet and you'll decide, you know, this is my path, the path that I'll follow. And so there are really these two approaches. Um, but I'd love if you could ask your question and with the orange post-it note, start to write down what is your origin story. Maybe you don't think you have one yet. Uh, maybe it's something that you've you know, been working on already. So again, as an engineer, maybe it's like the fact that you decided to embrace engineering. Um, or maybe there's something that you know, popped up in your life or some circumstance that is something that you really care about. And as you think about that, because I see a lot of you already writing things down, I would encourage you to think about a couple of questions. Uh, one of them, though, is like, what makes you really upset about this world, or what makes you really upset on throughout a daily basis? And I don't mean something that's petty. I mean something that you know you look and you see. I, I you know, that's aggravating. I don't see why that the, that is the way it is. I want that to change. That might be what your origin story is and what motivates you to follow a certain career, get a certain degree in college. Um, but definitely, what is your origin story is the question. And if anyone wants to share, please feel free to just shout out what you've written down. I might come back to you guys at, uh, just to get an update on where you're going with this. So again, you have that original question, what's your power? And we'll come back to that uh, again as we go along. But really, figuring out your origin story and what motivates you is the first step to making an impact and the first step to becoming a real world superhero. Because it is the reason why you do your work. When you have that why, when you have that origin story in your head, you're going to commit to the work that you do even on the hardest days. Um, so maybe your origin story is something that is deep, something that will keep you doing the work that you're doing. And so as you continue to write that out and think that through, I'm going to continue on. Again, your origin story is the reason why you show up, why you do the work you do. Great. It seems like most people have stopped writing. So now to continue on, I mentioned the origin story is the first step. The next one is your kryptonite. And while I don't think your kryptonite is necessarily the step to becoming uh, a real world superhero, for those who don't know, kryptonite is the, uh, the thing that was Superman's biggest, or is Superman's biggest weakness. Uh, and so knowing your kryptonite and knowing what that challenge is in your life could really help you figure out how to compensate for some of those issues. So maybe for instance, like you realize you're not great at public speaking, and yet if you have an idea, you wanna get people on board and tell them about it and kind of convince people to support and join your team and sponsor your efforts and everything else. So that's just one example. Uh, but to share two examples that are up here, this is Daryl Scott, no relation to me. Uh, and he's the founder of an organization by the name of Push Black, which pushes out a bunch of news and messages every single day around black history, uh, news, culture, 
Um, and then this is Laura Doyle, who is 10 years old, and she is the founder of an organization by the name of ISSI, which stands for International Space Station Interesting Exercise. You saw the video message from astronaut Katie Coleman earlier, and to start with her origin story, Laura actually happened to meet astronaut Katie Coleman one day, um, along with her dad, Mike Doyle. And she asked astronaut Katie Coleman, like, what is something that could be improved in space? What's something you didn't like about your experience? And astronaut Katie Coleman said to her, uh, basically, space is a rigorous place to live. Like, I can't relate to, to this, but essentially it requires you to work out because you're in a zero gravity environment. Um, if you think about it for us, like we are walking around every day, we're lifting things, we're using our muscles all the time, um, but in space, because of the zero gravity environment, they don't have that, and so their muscles would atrophy, and that requires them to continue to work out so they basically don't waste away. Um, and so what Laura created was a solution to that problem that Katie Coleman mentioned, which is uh, a way for as the name says, um, a way for astronauts to work out through interesting exercise on the International Space Station. And so I'll come back to Laura in a second. Uh, but then there's Daryl, and he created Push Black. Um, and in talking with him about why he created it, he really explained to me that just as a black man in this world, he realized that there wasn't a lot of education and awareness around some of the, the history facts and news and culture that he was pushing out there. Um, and so then that's why he started the work that he was doing, because he saw a personal need. Um, and now, in the work that he's doing, pushing out these notifications every single day over Facebook Messenger, he's reaching 500,000 people. Um, meanwhile, through Laura's work with, inter with ISSI, uh, she has won awards uh, with not only the Space Apps Challenge Hackathon in Space Apps NYC, um, but she also just recently was at Blue Origin, which is the startup that was founded by Jeff Bezos of Amazon. Um, so again, they both really knew their origin story and their why, uh, but for each of them, it's interesting because they both recognize that their kryptonite is that they didn't know everything, which I think is obvious. Like We all know that we don't know everything, but I think it's important to recognize in that same fact how important it is to have a team. And so when you realize your kryptonite, like the gaps and issues that you have, you're able to think, huh, how do I find people who fill those gaps and help me build better, strong, successful teams? Uh, and so that's what Daryl mentioned is his one source of success, like really finding a team and getting people to compensate for the issues and uh, faults and areas where he was lacking. And that's also where, where Laura has found success because, again, when she started ISSI when she was eight years old, she didn't have the technical skills that she has now, and there's still a lot of skills that she doesn't have. So you can even see just around her in this picture, there are other people wearing her ISSI shirts and supporting her, her work and helping build the technology that they use. So actually, here's a short video clip of Laura and her dad, Mike, who are going to talk about uh, their experience being engaged in the Space Apps Hackathon and also about just building their team. Um, I thought it was awesome. Like, um, there was like so many people and so many cool ideas and actually I was finally going to be able to make this dream that I had come true. And um, I was pretty amazed that it was actually happening, and the hackathon was really cool, too. Yeah, it was really amazing how many people, you know, just kind of clicked with the idea and wanted to help and contribute. We brought a couple of teammates, um, you know, someone who had been at the hackathon in 2015 that I had met, someone who's a software developer that I knew. Um, so we had the seeds of a team, but we ended up picking up three more team members on site. Uh, and that was that was just amazing. And we continued to work with these team members after the hackathon through the summer when we actually got our own HoloLens and started building out a real uh, mixed reality game. Yeah. 
So I think one thing again to point out is like the technical skills are all there. Again, you will all develop those skills and have those, but I think the thing that, that I found in talking to people again and again and again is how the difference maker oftentimes is that you have some people who try to do everything by themselves and try to make an impact on their own and you have other people who realize like, you know, I do have my kryptonite and I need to kind of fill those gaps and, um, you know, find ways to team up with others to make that difference. So here's the question again, what is your kryptonite? And that's what I'd say to use your, obviously your third post-it for, your blue post-it. What are those areas where you could definitely use help? Maybe it's, again, it's presentation skills. Maybe it's technical skills. Maybe it's just things that get in the way of you accomplishing whatever work that you're trying to do. Again, as you write that, I want you to think of your kryptonite as your chance or your opportunity to team up with others to fill some of the gaps that you have in your skills and abilities. Or your kryptonite might even be a chance to team up to fill in uh, some of the resource gaps you have, so like funding and other things that you think you'll need to create whatever you're working, you want to create to create something that, uh, that sort of fulfills your origin story and gives you, you meaning as far as uh, you define that. Right. And as you continue to write that down, I'm going to tell you about two more people and the third step. So I told you about your origin story. I told you about your kryptonite. And now I'm going to tell you about power, your power. Uh, I'm going to start with two people. And coincidentally, it's another Scott. Uh, but this is actually my sister, Lindsay Scott. Uh, and this is Gina Geshrao, or just Nagesh. Uh, so Lindsay is someone who, growing up, I actually have a picture of her as like a kid that's her being really, really nerdy and uh, a lot different than this modeling uh, posing picture. Uh, but basically, Lindsay is someone who, growing up, you know, I, I think a lot of you would probably recognize that, you know, she's probably not the typical coder in that you see her in front of this camera modeling, and it's because Lindsay had an interest in modeling and also in app development. You know, it's something that's super common that I'm finding more and more now uh, among different people is that they're realizing, like, you don't just need to choose a certain path. You could live your different uh, app developer, one to model and act. She studied computer science and theater in college and went on to model for you know brands like Victoria's Secret, for, uh, for Calvin Klein, for Prada, for all these major brands. And just recently, even if you look up Lindsay, you'll find that uh, there are a lot of stories about men and people saying to her, but men in particular saying to her, you can't do this because you're a woman, because you're a beautiful woman. Uh, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen in the news, and I hope you're not, uh, you, you know, you realize that women and other people could, could accomplish a lot in this world. Uh, but, you know, Lindsay saw that, and she realized in her experience there were a lot of cases where she'd go to hackathons and people wouldn't take her skills seriously as a software engineer. Um, and so she knew her origin story, which was wanting to do these things. She knew her kryptonite, which is a lot of people telling her that she couldn't. And now she used her power um, to not only speak up, but she used her power as a software engineer for an organization that is doing good to empower others who are doing good. Um, specifically, the 841st fastest growing company in the US, um, a nonprofit fundraising platform called Rallybound. And then there's Nagesh, who is similarly someone who has really found his power. And I think even looking at his picture, you could tell that he's someone who's confident and, and feels his power, uh, similar to Lindsay. But for Nagesh, his origin story, again, more like uh, the traditional background. He just wanted to work his way into tech. 
he wanted to accomplish a lot in the tech field and to, to use tech. He was an engineer by trade. Um, but the thing that Nagesh found was really that for him to accomplish anything, to create technology that mattered, he needed to collaborate and work with others throughout projects. Um, Nagesh actually is very perceptive and has learned a lot along his journey over the past three decades of his work. And now he works for the United States Small Business Administration focused on supporting small businesses and startups who are, again, making a social or environmental impact. So with Lindsay, with Nagesh, they have a couple of different pieces of advice, and I'm just going to show you um, a clip from, from each of them with uh, their wisdom. Uh, just to spoil it a little bit, Lindsay's key advice is that when it comes to your power, uh, to really be curious and try things out. I guess my piece of advice would be to stay curious. You know, uh, if there's something that you even might be a little interested in or something that you heard about, why not go out and research it and find it out if it's something that's for you? Because I think a lot of people miss a lot of opportunities in life um, by not stepping outside of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that would be my main bit of advice, just try, you know? Sometimes it's so yeah, I, I think the, the key thing about Lindsay's advice, and there's a lot, and these are all long conversations that I'm having with different people, but one thing that's interesting about Lindsay's advice is just recognizing that she works with a lot of young people who don't necessarily know what they want to do, and for her, she didn't necessarily know how she wanted to use her tech skills, and so you know that's the way she's really experimented, explored, and tried a bunch of things out. And here's some advice from Nagesh, which is really about the barriers that, or some of the barriers that people face when it comes to making an impact. Specifically, the opinions of other people who, um, of course, will tell you that you can't. Um, just general advice that you have that you find yourself doling out uh, oftentimes. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, there's a lot, but I, I think one, one, one common one that I, I, I tell folks a lot is uh, um, let the critics say what they want to say, prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been, I've had so many critics in my life. It's not even funny. Um, I, I've always had, oh, oh yeah, anything I've worked on or done, I've had people try to poo-poo me on. Yeah. And, and, and I go, okay. Yeah. And then I prove them wrong. Yeah. And then they, raise, they come out to me later and say, oh, yeah, you were right. And I go, oh, that, that's great. Um, you, you know, with the, there are haters out there, and so don't let the haters get the better of you. Yeah. And I think that's really the key point. I mean, it might sound kind of funny, like like your uh, little Uzi bird or something like that, or like a rapper. Like, they're always talking about haters. But really, like, I mean, I'm sure you all in your own ways have kind of experienced haters, whether it's people not taking you seriously, um, whether you put out an idea and they're like, oh, whatever, we're gonna go this other way. Like, there'll be people who don't support your work. I'm sure you've already seen that. Um, but sometimes you just need to push through that. And that's the advice that Nagesh has. Um, Nagesh, who's incredibly successful in his work in tech. Um, I don't know where he would be if he always, you know, uh, paid that much attention to the haters and the people who didn't support his work. Again, I want you to kind of go back to that first screen, post it, and think about that question, what's your power? Um, you saw a lot of different examples. Uh, I, we talked about the origin story. We talked about the kryptonite. And we talked about uh, the power now. But I really want you to think again, like, what's your power? How could you make a difference? And maybe it's changed a little bit from what you initially wrote down. But I want you to consider and remember that Step one is really understanding your why and why you show up. Uh, step two, that kryptonite, is thinking how could you team up with other people to, to build your work. And then finally, step three is this question about your power. And the way that I wrote this, like, your power is your way to fire up. It's your way to kind of like, in a, in a way, metaphorically, like, set the world ablaze with your idea 
and to get other people on board. It's your way to like actually have something, an idea, like a spark that turns into something. So again, just as we are wrapping up, and maybe we have time for questions and some discussion, but uh, again, your origin story, your kryptonite, and your power, uh, it might sound so simple, but again, a lot of you have the technical skills, or are building those technical skills, um, or even non-technical skills that will allow you to make an impact and make a difference in the way that you want to make it. Uh, but these three steps are things that I've found and heard that people in tech often overlook. So considering the fact that you want to do something that's meaningful to you rather than something that uh, you know that you hate to do every day with your with your life or career or school and education. You want to recognize your kryptonite and recognize uh, what are the areas where you're lacking because if you kind of fill in those gaps you have a much higher uh, chance of succeeding. And then finally you want to recognize your power uh, which is the culmination of all of that, all of the work that you're doing and the people you're collaborating with. So just to kind of wrap up with a quote, um, I have this quote, to change the world, start early, and that is from Laura Doyle, who founded International Space Station Interesting Exercise, um, ISSI. And I thought this quote was funny because when I asked her the question, what advice she had, she said this, and I wasn't sure if she meant like start early in the day or start at a young age, but I'll take it as both. Uh, you know, really, you all have this great opportunity uh, as students to step back and think about, you know, things a little bit. You have a lot of responsibilities as students, but you also have this environment where you have so many resources at your disposal. Uh, that can really allow you to live whatever mission, whatever origin story you're trying to live. Um, and so I would really give this advice to change the world, start early, you know, get started thinking about ways that you can make an impact. And I think Elliot was saying earlier, like, you know, don't get too tied up in, uh, in you know, what you're coding, what you're creating. Realize that uh, in order to succeed, you know, you, fail fast, fail often, and you learn from those failures as you, you move along. And so that's all I have to share with all of you, but I'm wondering if you, if you have any questions, happy to answer them with whatever time we have remaining. So thank you. Awesome. Any questions or thoughts as we kind of wrap up? Thing, don't be shy. Do you have a question? Yeah, I can what, see it. What's your power? My power? I, I think my power uh, is probably like asking questions and genuinely being interested in that. So, like again, with all these interviews, I realized that I've had a really good time learning from people and genuinely like asking, why do you do what you do? How do you do this? How do you do that? And so, uh, asking questions, curiosity, and learning from it. Um, and then of course, like, I want to share a lot of that, which is why I'm you know, sharing those examples with, with all of you. And I'm sure you could think of a ton more examples of people who are doing awesome things in the world. So yeah, other questions or thoughts that, that any of you have? Yeah. Um, why did you start working on the 180 project? Yeah, so I started working on 180 degrees of impact at the start of uh, 2017. Before that, I actually already started doing a bunch of these interviews through my full-time work. Um, and I mean, I graduated college in 2014. And after that, about two years focused on social media campaigns and advocacy. Um, and then in 2016, that's when I really kicked off this sort of career, which is more focused on meeting and supporting and, and talking with a lot of change makers who are doing their own cool work. Yeah. That's cool stuff.